reading from 1 Kings. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up ate, drank, then he went in the strength of that food, forty days and forty nights, to Horeb, the mount of God. The word of the Lord. I don't want to throw a wet blanket over our Olympic feast of swimming and diving, running and jumping and rowing and general athletic excellence. But did you know that there was such a thing as post-Olympic depression? I don't know if it comes for the viewer who turns on his or her television and discovers that it's back to baseball, the perfect summer game that has somehow been excluded, along with softball, from the Summer Olympics, a thought which in and of itself is enough to depress. But it should come as no surprise to us that athletes at the Olympic level often suffer from a post-game letdown that can lead to depression. 
Think about it. Most of the competitors have built their lives around a single purpose, going to the Olympics. Intense preparation, daily practice, and adjusting life schedules dominate the athlete's life. And there is a very narrow window of opportunity for success or failure. In an article that launched me on this subject, it said that Victoria Pendleton, who won the Olympic gold medal in the women's sprint track cycling event at the Beijing Games, said, you have all this buildup for one day, and when it's over, it's, oh, is that it? You're relieved, but you're kind of sad and numb. It's over? After the Olympics, the elite athlete can lose her or his sense of purpose and experience depression if not prepared for the transition. The reason you are probably not surprised by anything I just told you is that this phenomenon is as old as time itself and is perfectly played out for us in today's reading from First Kings, where we enter the story in the second act with a solitary figure, Elijah, sulking under a shrub. It's important to understand that he has just had his Olympic moment. It was his showdown with the prophets of Baal who were challenged by him to a sacrificial duel by fire. You remember the story. The Lord God wants the people to know who is the real God. So the prophet is ordered to challenge the Baalites to a midday showdown. Two altars he built. One to the Lord, the other to the God. The challenge is which God will send down fire to consume the offering and the winner will be the God the people should worship. It's a cooking show with eternity on the line. The prophets of Baal jump around, pray, beg, and whirl like dervishes, but nothing happens. Elijah, full of himself, even taunts them, talks a little smack. At noon, scripture says, Elijah, started making fun of them. Pray louder. He's a god. He's daydreaming or relieving himself or perhaps he's gone off on a trip or maybe he's sleeping and you've got to wake him up. After all this commotion and failure, it's Elijah's turn. He builds his altar, prays a simple prayer, and before you can say the Lord God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, he has a side of beef flambe. Big winner. Get out the metal. Roll out the podium and cue the music. It should have been it once and for all. But we know that the conflict between God and lesser gods continues to this day. It's always there, and it always will be there, because that is reality. Like Olympic athletes and prophets, while there may be moments of glory for the believer, the life of faith is lived out amid the mundane. There will be moments when we, like Elijah, discover that we can't win them all. And it is at those moments when one temptation 
is the greatest. And the temptation is summed up in a line the prophet speaks to God, but we are allowed to overhear. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. That, no pun intended, is the prophet's near fatal mistake. Elijah thought that he, and he alone, could do what all the prophets before him and after him could not. He thought that he could change everything. And when he discovers that he didn't and couldn't and wouldn't be able to do that, he sinks into a great depression. Listen to me very carefully now, men and women. There are some things that cannot be changed. There are some people who have and always will have refused to act in their own best interest. There are some institutions that just when you think you've got them pointed in the right direction, will revert to their own self-destructive ways. And if you allow yourself to think for a second that your mere presence will make everything all right, think again. Sometimes you have to realize that you've done your best and move on. Find another cause. Something that God wants you to do. Take another step along the journey that God is leading you on. And the promise of this text is that God will give you exactly what you need to do just that. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched Elijah and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. The journey may seem too much for you, but it is not too much for you and God. You have the promise of God's presence in Jesus Christ. You are not going to be able to win them all. But God will be with you through it, giving you exactly what you need. And what you and I need most is Jesus' presence in our lives. To have him near enough that we are able to say, I feel like I came in night in an eight-swimmer race. But you know what? It's going to be okay. Because of Jesus, I can go on. Because of Jesus, I can live. That's the good news for all of us. Like the emotionally healthy Olympic athlete, you need to know that no matter what happens, whether it is the thrill of victory or the agony of defeat, you can live, really live, now and forever, knowing that whatever happens, Christ is with you and will give you exactly what you need, bread, his presence, win or lose for all your journeys. Thanks for listening.